So let's see if I can get my slides to, ah, huh, here we go. Okay, we're really pleased to welcome you. We love when the commission is full strength again. And uh, I've been a commissioner now for one year. Maria, two years now? Uh, close to four. Oh. <laughs> and so it's, it's a great honor to serve on the commission. And I am, like I said, so happy we are gonna be full strength again, uh, officially full strength. Um, the purpose of this program is to prepare you to be an effective commissioner. And you've been provided, I believe, with a policies and procedures document and information about the mass open meetings law. Has everyone gotten that? Not yet. Not, not yet. yet. So things, are, things are a little in flux with the policies ah. and procedures. So I have not sent that out. But after this, I will send everyone the, the slideshow about the open meeting rule. Okay. But this orientation is a little different. It's intended to provide more than just the facts that you get in those documents about what we do and what we are. It's also what I would call an onboarding. It's to familiarize you more with the culture of the WHRC, the nuances, nuances of how we work together as a body and as individuals who represent our community. So in short, we're here to hit you, help you hit the ground running. Maria. All right. This is a tab team. Right. <laughs> um, so to give you a little bit of a background, um, the WHRC was the brainchild of Bill Chedman, who sadly has since passed away, um, who was incredibly involved in our town and just uh, an amazing, amazing person. Um, he was a former member of the school committee. He was also active with the Wakefield Alliance Against Violence. He helped bring the Boys and Girls Club to Wakefield and worked with other charitable, charitable groups in town. Um, he, as well as uh, several other people, noted that although there were programs promoting acceptance and diversity in the schools, there weren't any kind of formal programs that existed in the general community. Um, he was really passionate in his desire to increase the diversity and celebrate the diversity in the community um, and to promote the rights of citizens and promote conversations on all different topics um, under the human rights umbrella. Um, in 2015, Mr. Chetwin brought together an action group consisting of the school superintendent, the police chief, the town administrator, and others. Once they received approval to form the, the WHRC, they established um, basic policies and procedures, including how and by whom the commissioners would be chosen. Um, and this continues to be an evolving, um, kind of an evolving document. In, two, in November of 2015, the WHRC held its, its first meeting. Um, so we are confident that you were drawn to the WHRC because of our mission to foster through our activities, a welcoming and safe community for everyone. Our role is to encourage conversation through programming and the dissemination of information. If asked to intervene in any kind of conflict, we encourage parties to speak with one another. Um, if investigation is needed, we refer the, the parties to the town administrator. Um, we may be asked by the town administrator to provide advice on discrimination complaints filed and to respond to requests for information and guidance on human and civil rights, but we are not expected to be human or civil rights attorneys. Um, that's outside of our jurisdiction. Um, we have the support of the town council and that's the town council SEL, not, we also have the support of the town council, the governing body <laughs> ending with CIL, um, but our town council, the attorney who serves um, as our legal uh, kind of advisor. Um, we also collaborate with groups and organizations with similar missions in and outside of Wakefields. Okay. Now, this particular screen document, this flowchart is actually changing. And, and probably by not this meeting coming, but by the meeting after, it's going to look somewhat different. But this is how the commission is comprised at this moment. Um, you can see we have 11 voting members and eight of them are appointed by the town council and the school committee. And then we have three specialized commissioners. Uh, the chief of police appoints one, um, the superintendent of schools appoints our student member and the clergy council selects a representative. So we have some very wise people helping us. Candidates are publicly solicited from the whole community with the goal of forming a very representative type body, representative of our community. Um, you must be a citizen of Wakefield when you are appointed, 
But if during your term, for some reason, you move, you can continue to be a commissioner and continue to work with us. The process, how do you get chosen? You've just gone through it. Typically, your applications are reviewed and interviews are conducted by the chairs of the town council and the school committee and the WHRC. Uh, they, we also, the WHRC this year also looked at all the applications. And so we were able to give some sort of advice on who we would like to have as commissioners to join us. The vote is taken by the town council and the school committees. And um, once you're appointed, I don't know if you've done this yet, you have to be sworn in by the town clerk. Make sure you make an appointment, you sign the big book. It takes, you can do it, I did it in the parking lot because I was right in the middle of the pandemic. So you don't have to go into town hall. Um, then you have to complete the online state conflicts of interest ethics course. This takes about two hours. And so make sure that you sign up for that. And I believe in your, did you get a letter inviting, telling you about that particular course and giving you a link? Did everyone get that link? Do it as soon as you can because you're supposed to be able to, you're supposed to be officially signing with the town and have taken that course when you start voting as a commissioner. Um, your roles and responsibilities, as we said, are broadly described in the, in the policies and procedures document. The big thing is you're encouraged to participate as fully as possible in the activities and the fulfillment of our mission. Maria, terms? Um, so it, it, historically, um, the voting members appointed by the town council and school committee serve three-year terms with a maximum of two consecutive terms. Um, town council might tweak the term lengths a little bit, but we're still uh, we're waiting to hear um, about that. The clergy member usually serves one year. The student member may serve one or two years and the police department member serves at the discretion of the chief of police. Um, there are term limits to ensure that we remain a representative body um, that's open to new ideas. All terms end at the end of April um, and each year in the spring, the voting members nominate and vote on the officers which are chair, vice chair and secretary treasurer. So um, at next week's meeting, we will have elections for um, the incoming officers. Um, we are overseen by our three ex officio members, the town administrator, Steve Mayo, the police chief, Stephen Scorey, and the school superintendent, Doug Lyons. In addition, the town council, school committee, and youth council liaisons, they attend our meetings um, and they provide input and support. And just to reiterate, make sure you get sworn in at, the, at town hall before next week's meeting so you're able to vote next week. Right. You, you can still meeting. come to the meeting, but you won't be able to vote if you're That's not sworn right. in. Okay, how about these meetings? Well, we meet on the third Tuesday evening of each month and sometimes meetings are skipped during the summer, although last summer, because everyone was home, we had meetings in June, July and August. Um, yeah, this is very important. A minimum of three days in advance of our meetings, whoever the chairperson is of that meeting with input from other people on their committee develops an agenda sends it to the town administrator and ask the town administrator to schedule the meeting and announce it publicly. You have to do that at least three days in advance. This is not a body that can act on a dime. We must go through the proper open meetings process. Um, even with minutes, we actually have to have our minutes for even our subcommittee meeting minutes approved at our meetings and once they have voted on their approved data means, then they can be publicly posted. So there's very strict procedures and we have written these down. Um, Jen Fetcher, who just finished her term, was kind enough to put together a very thorough document on how these procedures work and we'll pass them along to you. Um, subcommittees, same thing. Um, I'm on the communication subcommittee and whenever we have a meeting, we must announce it to the town, to the public three days in advance. Um, and we do that through the town clerk. At any of these subcommittee meetings, you can have a maximum of five voting commissioners. That way we, we share the work, we share the burden, and no one person has more of a voice than another on any activity. So you can be working on many different initiatives at one time, 
but you can't have more than five commissioners on one subcommittee. Uh, as you can see, we're currently meeting by Zoom and the town has chosen to report all of our virtual meetings. When we're able to meet live, we'll meet in town hall and those meetings won't be recorded, but there will be written minutes. There's written minutes for everything. In fact, Maria, do I need to submit minutes for this? Um, I will double check. I believe so, but the minutes would just be conducted we, training. Yes, it would training be, yes, members. and yeah. the names of the people who participated. Right. Um, because of the open meeting laws, and we strictly abide by it, the public is invited to all of our meetings. They are given time right after our roll call um, to speak. It's a, you know, brief, brief comments can be made. And then they can sit in and listen to the entirety of the rest of our session, except if we must go into one of those rare executive sessions if something very sensitive has to be discussed. And we use basic Robert rules of order. Nothing really, really strict, but we try to use what will keep us focused and of course courteous, because courtesy is of the utmost importance. Now, every single commissioner has a voice. And all of you, whether you've been on the commission for a year, two years, or are brand new, uh, you're encouraged to respectfully express your thoughts and your views. And don't remain silent. Please speak up. But now for the nuances of how you express your views. When you're participating in these discussions, these are sort of like little guidelines that I picked up once at a training. One of the main guidelines was show up, fulfill your obligations, come to the meetings and really attend to them, represent the body. Um, when you're there, pay attention. Don't text on the side, truly be present. Please listen and please be prepared. We will send you materials in advance of the meeting. Please read them. Uh, be open to outcomes. What does that mean? Even if you don't agree, when a decision is made by the commission, that is the decision all of us abide by. So once the meeting is over, that is the decision that's publicly stated. We, we don't engage in, in dis discussion of other things that might have occurred during the meetings once the decision is made. So we speak as one, there's a consensus. But we do want you to speak the truth. We do want you to speak the truth because your opinions do matter during the meeting. It's just that after the consensus is that is what we present to the public for a decision. Another important one, it's attend to safety. Do no harm to anyone on the commission or to others in the community. Please keep in your mind that your public Sherry? speech will, yes? Sorry to interrupt you, but I can't really hear you. I am I am hard of hearing. Oh, so I'm sorry. I don't know oh. if you can speak like a little bit closer to your speaker because I keep turning my, my volume mic is, is up all the way though. Okay, my mic was down in my chest, but I'll pull it up here. Can that is okay. that better? No, somehow not. Even though oh, like, and I'm so I loud. <laughs> okay, I am. You know what? I will also be able to present you with a written script after this. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Sorry, Daniela. No worries. Okay. Okay. The last one: attend to safety. Um, again, I was about to say that whatever you say as a representative of the WHRC might be construed as speech of the WHRC. So please be mindful when you speak in public um, and at these meetings as well. And finally, there's no silent voting. Maria as our current chairman, and she possibly will be our next chairman, um, calls for, <laughs> Everybody has to say yay. Everyone has to verbally sit, vote. You don't nod. You say yes or you say no. So that's very, very important because it's an affirmation that you do truly believe that you are voting yes or no. Okay. And continuing on the theme of communications, Maria. Okay. Um, Daniela, can you hear me? Okay. All right. Um, I'll try to make sure to remember to keep my voice up. Um, but yes, we will give you a written script afterwards. Yep. Um, so in terms of communications, we communicate honestly and respectfully under all circumstances, um, regardless of if the general meeting, subcommittee meetings, um, anytime that we are meeting as a public body, um, we are honest and respectful with each other, um, with people in the community. 
We have a number of tools available to us, including email, our website and Facebook page, which are managed by designated members of the commission. Um, our email is currently managed by the chair, um, myself, and, um, and I also monitor other town websites and Facebook pages for discussions relative to the HRC. And we have a number, uh, we have several other members who have access to the Facebook page as well and can post things and respond to, to comments, as ne comments and questions as needed. Um, regarding social media, we do not individually engage on social media on matters relative to the WHRC. Um, and as a body, we do not engage in partisan politics. We do invite the public to our meetings and offer them an opportunity to speak directly after the roll call and are sometimes called upon um, during the meeting. We have very robust conversations with the public at our meetings and events, and we submit written material and photos to local publications and invite the press to cover any events that we put on. I have turned with my microphone. I hope that helps, Daniela. Yeah, it did. Are we allowed to ask questions? Sure. Think we're going to have, you can ask them as we go, or you can wait to the very end because we have a big question mark on the last slide. <laughs> well, regarding a, the piece about public speaking, is it written somewhere in our like bylaws or how meetings are organized that it always has to be in the beginning of the meeting or does it, because, you know, that, that forces people that have, have to like come and have something to say, whether or, but then they could have attended the meeting and then maybe they could have commented on something that happened. So I'm just not sure if it's intentionally in the front or if like, you know, intentionally meaning like it's written in our laws somewhere that that's how it's supposed to be. I just don't, I didn't know. Yeah, um, it's not actually under our, under rules that are specific to the Human Rights Commission. Um, I believe that is a, a, under the Robert, what's called Robert's Rules of Order, which, which are the governing rules for any, for town bodies. Um, that the public participation is at the beginning, that the public is limited to, each participant is limited to three minutes um, to say their piece. It's not a back and forth dialogue. They're there. They can take their full three minutes to express their opinions or kind of their say on something. But throughout the, that is, that is their opportunity. And why it falls at the beginning of the meeting, it's a good question. Um, um, I, I don't mean to be dismissive to say, it's that's just the way it's done, but that's my understanding. Uh, but I can certainly look into that and see um, if there's options or opportunities to to move the public partic participation to the end of the meeting. Or, um, but yeah, in terms of the town bodies, um, whenever I've observed meetings, they always have the public participation part at the beginning. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I've noticed yeah. that too. And I'm new to town. I'm new to town meetings and so yeah. that's why i'm like where do these rules come from i don't even yeah, know no that's a okay. great question something that never <laughs> even occurred to me <laughs> great thank you but, sorry go on sherry people can enter the meeting at any time during the meeting but they just the public participation part is at the very beginning and actually we had a meeting recently that i think we spent two-thirds of the meeting talking to the public before we even had our standard meeting um, and i believe you were there daniela at that particular meeting. Um, um, I'm not sure if it was the April meeting or the March meeting. I'm not sure. I think it was the it was the, just the past meeting we had the last okay. one. Um, so we we do exercise a bit of flexibility when there's an important issue that we want to discuss in greater detail with the public. Okay, I have to say that. This body is very impressive. It's only five years old, five and a half years old. And so much has been done and continues to be done and introduced. I mean, we have signature events you're all probably familiar with. That's how I came to know of the, of the WHLC. And that includes the Martin Luther King Day, International Women's Day, and the Pride Month. To that, this year, we have added in October an Indigenous People commemoration. And in this month, we have all kinds of AAPI events going on. Um, I do believe that during Black History Month, we also had children reading. So what we try to do is be, we, we try to do a lot considering how many people we have on the commission and people are volunteers so we can have just so much time. Um, we have in the past organized or co-produced anti-violence and bias programs, in fact, um, we are sponsoring some more um, active bystander trainings coming up soon. We already did some this year and we're gonna do a couple more. 
And I actually have volunteered. I'm going to start training to become a facilitator because it was such a terrific and worthwhile program. Um, we do butts book discussions at the library. We've done a speaker series with the Unitarian Universalist Church. Um, because we're concerned also that all citizens, whether they're new to the community or they've been a little bit longer, feel welcome and included, we've gotten involved with and participated in Lakefield 101, the Festival by the Lake when it's there, Farmer's Market. We're hoping this year we can again resume some of these live activities. Uh, we have advocated on statewide or local human rights issues. The logo is a good example of that, the high school sports logo. Um, we this year instituted a graphic messaging campaign. You may have seen the posters around town. They're very colorful. Yana Herzog, who is our student representative, is a talented artist. And she has given us four wonderful pieces of artwork um, that local businesses, the kiosk in town, and the library have displayed. Uh, we, let's see. I think it's time for Maria to speak now. <laughs> All right. Um, so to, uh, to spread the word about our, our events and activities, we use our website, our Facebook page, and the services of the town to, to promote them. Um, we broadcast, we're working on being able to reach people through email. Um, that's still a work in progress, but we also post flyers and we cross promote with our other community organizations, the schools and local publications. Um, also, we rely on word of mouth for people to, to spread the word about various events that we're putting on. Um, these same methods are used to recruit volunteers. We always welcome volunteers to help out because um, as, as we've gone through the years, we have taken on more um, without, um, we, we've taken on a lot more work and only a few more uh, voting members. So um, we are always looking for volunteers and, um, and we very much value the work of our volunteers. Um, so some ways that they can assist, um, they help in planning events, they help with registration or events receptions back in the, the before times, um, and hopefully someday soon again. Um, and they also promote our events and initiatives. We also have a budget that's approved by the town for our anticipated expenditures. That budget is, is $1,000 uh, per fiscal year. Um, we seek approval for expenditures outside of the usual and also um, it, it, we, we have a revolving account um, when people give us, sometimes we get unsolicited donations. Um, we also sell the hate has no home here signs and um, we have that revolving account to be able to, to, keep, to keep that money. Um, and we also, um, we, whenever we get a donation, we go to the town council, we ask um, that they approve it. One of the things that isn't really in the script there, we should mention, if you have expenditures that you pay out of pocket, you, all you have to do is, if it's a budgeted item, is email a copy of the receipt with a request for reimbursement to Sherry Dolphin, the town administrator, and she will make sure that you are reimbursed for any approved expenditures that are within the budget. Um, it's a very simple project. Uh, it used to be you used to go and hand her these receipts, but now she prefers to be emailed them to her. Okay. There is no limit to what we can do if we have enough people involved and who we will interact with. Um, we interact with, I don't, are all of our faces in, okay, here we go. Then you can see the pictures a little bit better. I put you all off to the side. Um, we work with the elected leadership in the, you know, of the town council and the school committee, uh, especially in recruiting and appointing members. Uh, we have reached out to our elected representatives statewide. Um, we interact with town personnel a lot, including the town hall administrative staff, uh, we have a new community development director. Uh, there's a town communications director who helps us with our website. We even interact with the DPW, public safety, recreation, town, everyone for maintaining our records, announcing our meetings, approving and assisting in safely conducting our activities. Because when we do meet live, of course, you can understand why we need to interact with public safety and the like. And again, we're hoping that that's going to happen again soon. Um, we also interact with a great many different organizations, including our library, the Gem of Lakewood, um, NECCO, 
the schools, through the PTOs and the principals, we've been able to spread the word about all our programs, through religious groups, through the Board of Health, the Cultural Council, the Chamber of Commerce. All of them have helped us in developing and presenting programs. We'll work with whoever shares our mission, no matter what their political views. And we encourage you to suggest other possibilities for who we can engage with and collaborate with. Um, there is, like I said, I think it's not fully tapped all the possible resources for interaction to achieve our goals. Um, just a quick note about storage. We have um, both physical storage um, that we are, well, physical and digital storage. Um, because over the years, it's definitely become a priority as we've put on more events. We, um, you know, for example, for Pride Month, we have a collection of flags and pins and stickers, and we need to be able to store all of this stuff without taking over somebody's basement. Um, so um, we are, we don't have a central location yet for physical storage, but we are working on that. Um, in addition, we our minutes are stored uh, in terms of the digital storage. Our minutes are stored on our website, and we are compiling documents, graphics, and other resources for storage on um, something similar to Google Drive, um, so that future members can can look back and not have to reinvent the wheel um, for different events um, and programs that we've put together in the past. Um, we've uh, accumulated a lot of both the digital and physical materials over the years, so this has become increasingly important as our activities increase. And one thing, one note about Google Drive, we can only interactively use Google Drive at meetings because of open meeting laws. We can't just do that behind the scenes, having people um, give their input on Google Drive. So if there is a document that we all want to share and work on, we have to work on it together as it is now at our meetings. Sorry, could you say that just one more time? You do sound a little bit like you're underwater. Do you oh, mind just I have the same, I'm time. having the same experience, yeah. Okay. And I sound so loud to myself in my dining room. No, that, <laughs> I can hear you oh. over the fence, but no, I'm just kidding. But if you, <laughs> yeah, no, you actually sound better now. Thank you. Okay, I picked up my mic and put it towards my mouth. Okay, what I was saying was that if you have a, you know, typically people when they use Google Drive documents, they might use them interactively, you know, off, you know, outside of the meeting. We can't do that. Right. Yeah, we, we have to do it all together because of open meeting law. So just we just have to keep it in mind. It's it's limiting, but there's a legal reason for it. And finally, we are, and this year we're really working hard on this. We are trying to put together the kinds of resources and references that will make all of you are jobs easier and that each year we do not have to reinvent the wheel. So we have either started or already have developed these things that you see on the screen. Um, also, we're working on compiling a history before we remember the history. And that even includes a comprehensive list of everybody who has served. Because even when we were looking for that basic history that we gave you earlier, we had some difficulty finding the names of the people who might have initially been involved with helping to form the, the WHRC. Hold on one second. Okay. Um, I just had to remind my husband this is being recorded in the bathroom. Uh, we are, even at this time, we're creating guidelines so that every time the meeting is presented, you'll have a checklist. You won't have to say, oh, who do I have to send it to? How should I send it? Where should I send it? Who can help me put this together? Um, who do I need to help me with a facility, hanging a flag or whatever? And we're going to try to put together all of these things so that we have them on this special, I believe it's called SharePoint, which is a, a, a legal storage so that we can always find it and we won't be sending email around saying, do you have a copy of, or do you know who has this particular thing? Um, and this is the kind of organizational thing we've been working very hard on this year. The Stronger Together is an example of one of the pieces of artwork done by Jana Herzog. Um, I think you will see around town. If you go over to, uh, some of the places have hung all of those signs and they're keeping them all up. The second sign, we're hanging one a quarter, is a very colorful birthday cake celebrating diversity. 
Um, and the third one will go up late in June, and then another one will go up in the fall because we have four beautiful messages. And finally, we have. So I know we've covered a lot, um, and it, it, you might be overwhelmed. And if you are kind of shell shocked and <laughs> need to process it all and ask questions later, that's totally fine. But if you do have questions now, we are absolutely happy to answer anything, um, any feedback, any questions that you have about our processes. Um, the floor is open. Uh, I guess I can go first. Uh, the only question I had left over was, is there a structure, an organizational structure that shows the different subcommittees and what the subcommittees either work on or are responsible for? And because I couldn't hear everything, I'm not really sure. I did hear that I think that the minutes have to be recorded and agreed, or they have to be agreed upon for subcommittees, but um, do those meetings happen the same factor where Sherry would send a Zoom and it's recorded and other people are invited to it? Um, just cause I'm thinking like, would there be a subcommittee for example, like if there's a more than one person handling social media communications outreach or something like that. Um, I can answer that because I'm right now on two subcommittees. One of them has only two of us. And so we don't have to go through the town meeting process. Okay. Okay. But we have very fortunately, AAPI, we have attracted three of the most wonderful town moms you can imagine who have been guiding us because neither myself or my, my COPE subcommittee member for AAPI month is of Asian American or Pacific Islander descent. And we have these wonderful moms. Plus one of our past commissioners is doing our filming for us. So we really do heavily depend on, on volunteers. So again, anything less than three, if you have two people on a subcommittee, no. Once you have three, you have to go through the process. And actually this year we formed a communicate, a stand, sort of a standing committee, a communication subcommittee I'm on that committee. The other two people are no longer commissioners and I really would love to have some additional help. Um, we have started three sizable projects and we'd like them to continue. And the other two people are willing to work behind the scenes, but they can't officially work with us. You know, They could come to the meeting as the public if they'd like. Um, and we can talk more about, you'll learn more about what the communications committee is doing at next week's general meeting. The other subcommittees are formed as we need them. So prior to Pride Month, the chairperson asks for volunteers. And people choose those things that they're most interested in and able to do because a different you have lives. And there are times when you're so busy, and you know that you can't do certain things. So I knew that I had lots of time these couple of months, and so I volunteered for a lot. At other times, I may not, I'll have to step back. And that question. goes for all of you. Okay, it's Lindsay's turn. Ooh, sorry, I'm not used to, I don't know how the hand thing works. So <laughs> I guess to piggyback off of your question, if that's okay, in terms of subcommittees, like for example, I'm a therapist, I do mental health and addictions. I also work with the medical reserve and the Red Cross as a volunteer for the armed services division. So I've been doing a lot of promoting around mental health because it was mental health awareness month. It was also armed services awareness month. There was all kinds of things this month. So I was wondering like how, or if those sorts of things can be implemented with the commission as well, or if we can do programming around different things like that as well, or if it's specific to certain months or topics or anything areas of anything I guess yeah we I, always brought the question I guess like what can I do with this I have so many reasons like I have like physical resources like stacks of physical resources around mental health um different supports crisis especially now during COVID where it's such a big a big 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 deal especially with underserved populations who aren't able to access resources or don't have the insurance that can allow them to do so just I feel like increasing awareness in that area. I don't know if that's something that could be a subcommittee or something that I could just do on my own or like, what would that look like? Yeah, we always welcome um, new ideas. And, and one of the things that I love is that 
people are coming from so many different backgrounds and career paths and everything. Everybody has their area of expertise. And as you can lend your expertise to a particular area of human rights, even if it's something that we've never done before, we absolutely encourage that. Um, we love that cool. idea. Um, it's something that, yeah, that you could bring to a general meeting and say, this is what, this is what I'm thinking about and we can talk about it. And I mean, it might be something that we have a conversation about over a series of, uh, over a few meetings. Sure. Um, if we're still kind of forming what, what, what we want to do. Um, but yes, absolutely. That's something, that's something that you can do. Um, awesome. Yep, um, I just thinking. want to go back real quick um, to okay. Sherry, something that you had said. So we never actually, we did not actually designate um, you and Benny as, an, as, a, as a subcommittee. Once you are designated as a subcommittee, then you do have to post meetings, but you and Benny were, if, if two HRC members are working on something um, and, it, and, it's, it, and it's not designated a subcommittee, it's not something that you need to post, to post meetings for. So um, just, wanted to, just wanted to clarify that. Um, but yeah, and, and subcommittees, they, they come and go as we are planning events. Sometimes we, the past five years since we started, we've had um, the Martin Luther King, Coretta Scott King event. And we do, we form a new subcommittee each year to plan that. Um, so even though it's not in existence the full year, it is one that we form each year in anticipation of that event. But then there are other newer things that come up that we form a subcommittee for, for one particular event that we don't repeat for what, for whatever reason. And then, yeah. And then it just, we just keep moving forward. And I was just thinking about an idea for this coming month that you might be able to help with Lindsay as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's Pride Month and there has been tremendous amount of coverage of the stressors on um, youth yes. from the yes, age. Absolutely. And absolutely. perhaps there could be some programming around that. Mm -hmm. Sure, yeah, that sounds great. Yeah, so you bring all i'm just taking notes i'm sorry so if i look down i'm i am a note taker just always yeah. as a therapist that's what i do so if you ever notice me looking up I'm paying attention i'm just jotting okay. things down so i apologize for that if i didn't have all these scripts and notes in front of me i'd be taking notes too so all of you oh, bring sorry, your interest your talents your sensibilities your creativity and we do whatever we can do that's appropriate and meets our mission over the course of the year with the available people that we have. And again, we also get volunteers from the community. I think Eileen, you've already volunteered. I heard that. And then, so, I mean, that's how they got to know me and I got chosen to be on the commission as well because I volunteered. And um, we are so appreciative of having that, those extra hands, we really are. Um, but again, there, there is no set program that must be done every single year, although we do sure. have those specific ones that um, have become our, our key, key programs. Um, but we're, we're quietly and carefully and trying to fill in each and every month, I think. So. Are there programming, or I apologize for, again, no, I really need to get better about this whole Zoom thing, um, the Zoom meeting thing, and I promise I will, I promise. I'm much, much better when I'm in a more controlled setting. It's just, I've been doing the therapy No, I can like feel your enthusiasm. Today. It's good. It. Oh my gosh, I'm so enthusiastic. I'm so excited. Are there things like year-round programming? Like, for example, what I was just talking about, increasing mental health awareness, um, access to resources, community sports, and crisis intervention services where COVID's been such like a problem thing, not something, not events per se, but just something available or resources for the public. Cause I feel like that is also very, it's a lot of mental health programming and addiction specifically is really, I mean, there's not a lot of emphasis on underserved populations, which I know in Wakefield is a little bit different just because of, you know, the socioeconomic status of where we are, but obviously it's a concern everywhere. But I think just like, is there anything around something we could do year round to just let the public know that there's a place they can go for resources, information, access to services, you know, to help point them in the right direction if they are, you know, in a protected group or someone who would struggle with getting services otherwise, or I didn't know if that was something that was. It's not something that we've done in the past, but that's not to say that we couldn't, that we couldn't initiate something. Um, I think it would be great to partner with, um, with Catherine Dingra, who is, um, 
she's she heads up the she's the adult advisor to the youth council but she also has um oh my god i'm blanking on the program that she runs but it it has to do with substance abuse um and mental health um and um it's wake up wakefield that's what it is sorry um and she would be a great person to talk with about initiatives um and she had actually reached out to me a couple months ago about partnering around public health, mental health initiatives. Oh, um, great. So, That's amazing. Because I feel like it ties so closely in with human rights because there's such an overlap and I think it's so important. And I'd love to be a part of that as well, if that's, if that's possible. Yeah. I'm so passionate about it. It's like my favorite thing. Yeah. <laughs> Keep in mind, there's only one thing I have to tell you is that the, the commission's composition also evolves. So as I said, I had two partners with me on the communications committee and now it's just me. Um, I don't have other people who had those backgrounds. And so if we start something um, and you want to sustain it without, the, without a champion, without the specific person with those talents and abilities, sometimes it's not as easy to sustain. Absolutely, sure, absolutely. Yeah, and the terms are staggered so each each April, someone will either be up for appointment or their term will be will be complete. Um, that they can either apply for reappointment or they will step down and somebody will somebody else will come um, and fill their fill their position. So um, so yeah, each April there is it's definitely a transition and sometimes it's one person, sometimes it's three people. So it it really depends each year. I, I kind Thank of you. wish the transition happened in the summertime when there was less going on, because it's kind of, when yeah. the transition's right in the middle of two major months of, of commemoration. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And it makes it a little bit more difficult. Yeah. Uh, but I have a feeling all of you are going to just be fantastic. And I'm so excited. You, you'll probably have to pull your arm down so you're not raising your hand all the time that you want to volunteer. Uh, and that's the kind of folks that make up the commission, everybody pitches in and spends as much time as they can, um, but is very generous with their time, really generous with their time. And I hope that we all get to meet in person someday so we can sit down and get to know each other on a different level as well. I actually have a question about that. And then I also wanted to say, like, I, I feel like I do have a little bit of a benefit where I've, I have been involved in a couple mm -hmm. of um, the for, you know the other events and the subcommittees are run so well and you know what you're sort of getting into you're not being forced to to lead a whole entire you know uh, subcommittee on your own um, and the committee members have been fantastic so it's you know well organized and documented and it feels um, you know it feels like we're all going in the same direction which is which is really nice That's great and, and you know we're all learning as we go yeah, so. and that and that was pretty clear too. I think in a couple of the subcommittees with a couple of the members, where I think everyone was feeling like, let's ask each other these questions. Like, should we be doing this? Is this right? Let's ask Maria. Like, let's make sure we're we're doing it all correctly. And um, and there's no you know no one's feeling bad about it either, which is which is pretty great. Um, the two questions I had, one was around unsolicited donations. And specific to like what that means exactly. If someone should say to you, I'd love to make a donation to, <laughs> someone comes to me and says, I'd love to make a donation to, to the HRC. Do I hide? <laughs> do I say thank you? Uh, <laughs> That's it? Like what, how do we, what do we do? Yeah. And, and what does unsolicited mean exactly? Right. So um, as a town body, we cannot ask people for donations, but we have right. had people come to us and say, you guys do great work. I want to give, I want to donate to your organization. Mm -hmm. And what they can do is they can either contact the chair or they can contact um, Steve Mayo or Kevin Gill, who's the town accountant. Steve Mayo is the town administrator. They can contact them and say, I'd like, like to make a donation to the Human Rights Commission and send a check to them. Um, and then what happens is um, it, the check is presented to town council because generally what happens is anytime a donation is made to a town body, it, it if it's not designated and if it does not get a, approval to go to that specific body, it goes into the general town fund. Mm -hmm. um, so what town council has to do, um, and this is the governing body town council, not the attorney town council. Mm -hmm. um, it, 
town council is presented with a letter saying, please accept this on behalf of the Human Rights Commission. Um, and they would accept the donation. Um, so yeah, we, last year we got um, a check for $1,000 completely out of the blue. Somebody sent it and, and said, use it towards whatever you want. Um, and so, uh, so yeah, there's no, there's no problem. The problem isn't accepting the donation. The problem is just not making sure that we're not soliciting for, for donations. Okay, that's great. Going through the, the process, I would imagine as yeah. well. Yeah. yeah, and the town council generally is very happy to see that we're getting additional support so we can do even I'm more. Sure. Right. Okay, that's helpful. But I know the training does go into that. I, I completed it. So they, they go in and giving different examples of what we wouldn't be allowed to accept and what we could accept. And yeah, I yeah. think that, that'll also help some questions that you didn't mm -hmm. even ask, but. <laughs> yeah. yeah that's a good point it is in there yeah it definitely is in there I think it was it was good to sort of talk it through out loud because I, I think that people are always sort of interested in helping in some way and and I just wanted to make Absolutely. sure that we weren't sort of yeah. overstepping ourselves by saying you can donate you know that right. kind of thing. so yeah one that's of the places question. where it comes up um is at the farmer's market which we're going to start doing again we sell the hate has no home here signs we sell them at cost for five dollars and the number of times that people are like here's 10, keep the rest and everything that we're, we will say, we, we don't, we're not asking for donations and people are like, just take it. And then they walk away. So it, we're not going to like chase after people. But right. Yeah, as long as people understand that, um, that we're not, we're not requesting the donation. Uh, Marie, in a case like that, does that money have to be kept separate? Um, what we would do is, um, yes, we would keep it separate from, well, all of the money would go into our revolving account regardless, but I think we would need to account for, we sold X number of signs that accounts for mm -hmm. X number of money uh, to match, yeah. yes. and then separate donations. Um, so, yeah. Okay. And then uh, the last question is around gathering back together in a, in a normal world. Mm -hmm. Are there plans there? What does that look like for, for the HRC? Um, I think they're still they're still working it out for all town bodies. My understanding is that when we start meeting in person again, that there's going to be a kind of a hybrid. There will be meetings in person, but they will still be over Zoom because um, it, because it, it's just provided people with such increased access to Option. town government. Yeah. Right, exactly, and people. Um, whatever regardless whatever their situation is or their circumstances if they can't get to a meeting the, sure, yeah right right they can um they can attend the meeting um and so that that's what i've heard i don't know of any more concrete there may be more concrete details in place but i'm not um i'm not privy to that information at this point that's helpful but yeah. before or after the meeting the commissioners will have the ability because it won't be part of the formal meeting to get to know each other more personally, which has been difficult this year because we all would like to know each other even better. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's so many benefits to Zoom, but mm -hmm. you certainly lose the, the personal side of all of it. But sure. the recording of the of the meeting is is fantastic so that you know, yeah. community members can watch it and we can sit in the comforts of our, of our home and, and meet as a group, which is also really nice too. Right. Plus if somebody is not well, this provides them with a, a or if they were immune. Inclement weather, or something like yeah. that as well. If, yeah. yeah, there's some people that, that are either not able to get out and about, and that will allow them to mm -hmm. join in on the meetings. We don't get a lot of public participation, except for this one meeting we had recently, but we always get some, you know, one or two people, and they don't always stay the whole meeting. Mm -hmm. you know? um, Something, one other random thing, and maybe not even something that we want to talk about here. Maybe we save it for another meeting, but something that Daniela mentioned, and then I thought, gosh, wouldn't it be great if we could do this, is to see if we can have closed captions appear on our Zooms that sort of get posted out to um, to our websites, or even, you know, live as it's happening here. Daniela, as you said that, I was trying to play around. That's a great idea. I could find the closed caption bar. Um, sometimes I'm, I'm looking for it now. Hard of hearing is, is no, that's a great, great idea. Um, yeah. But it's something to be absolutely. About, so. Yeah, no, that's a great idea. That's a that's a great question. I don't see anything on here on my screen, the control screen either. 
Um, yeah, I'm not sure if Zoom easy. has it in the way that the town organized it. So uh, I do this sort of digital work uh, in my day job, and Teams already has started implementing the auto uh, closed captioning. But I do think it would be, you know, maybe if we're the commission that starts it, <laughs> very telling as we're trying to be inclusive inclusion yeah kinds of diversity and those living with this disabilities seen and unseen mm -hmm. is included in that um absolutely and yeah it was like really hard for me i went to two other town meetings and it was the same it, it, it was the hrc and it's just like a couple of members that are really soft-spoken or their mics are just like not super vibrant once the sound comes through the cyber waves okay. onto my end and then i was just like okay i have no idea what this person said and even when i got external speakers and turned it up it was like so hard and then i can only imagine what it's like for someone who's super super hard of hearing there's lowercase sure. d deaf and capital d deaf i'm pretty sure i'm the lowercase one i always get the two mixed up um but i can only imagine what it's like if someone had you know, any town members had even more of a disability and they just were like, I can't really participate because I don't know what's being said. But um, sure. just something cool if Sherry knows, uh, or I forget who our IT person is in the town of Wakefield um, that helps with these things. But if they already know, it's sometimes just a little add-on to the licensing. I don't know if, if Zoom has that yet or not, but I know Teams has it and Blue Jeans has it. So I, I would be shocked if Zoom does not already have it. Zoom does uh, have it. And it, yeah. that's exactly yeah, it like, I think Daniela, what, like what you mentioned, it's about licensing um, and, and whether or not, but I, I've used it in my office. So okay. They definitely have it. And I'm cool. thinking ADA, would Americans with Disabilities Act, you would think would require that any kind of public meeting like this had captioning. Of the action, yeah. Yeah, so it, it should be something the whole town should be engaged in. See, I know that this should be something maybe that we should wait until Tuesday to talk about. I'm sorry, but no, um, no, this it's is a great, really it's a great I, point. It, it clicked for me. It's a great question, and it's one that I can certainly reach out to um, to IT and town hall about, and um, maybe pro be able to provide some information next Tuesday. Yep. Okay, great. Thank you. That'll definitely be helpful for me in the future, yeah. at least. <laughs> plus, it's just one plus, person. Plus, um, Maria, you do have a, a personal line right to the town council and they can bring it up as well. Right. No. <laughs> Maria's husband is a uh, town councilor, Jonathan John. Yep. Really? He's yep. awesome. Thanks. <laughs> I like him. <laughs> uh, I hope so. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Great. So um, I'm looking forward to all of your participation next week. Again, if you haven't gotten signed in at town hall, please do so you can vote on all our issues. Um, come with this enthusiasm and your ideas and you will hit the ground running as the intention is. Thank you I'm all excited. so much. Thank you both. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And yeah, we'll see you next Tuesday. You'll get an email from me a um, couple days before the meeting. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions about how to get on or anything like that, just let me know. <laughs> nice right. to meet you all. Thank you so much for taking the right. time. Actually, Thank the um, in invitation Zoom email has already come out. Should yeah. I? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a great Thank night. You. Good night. Have a good night. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.